This is Raymond Wilson reflecting God's glory. What a wonderful day God has given to us that we can worship Him and praise Him and lift Him up. This is the Almighty God, the all-powerful God, the God that we serve, the one that we're talking about today. And I have a thought this morning that I want to bring out about uh, our light. God said, let your light so shine before me that they might see your good work and glorify our Father in heaven. And I have a thought this morning I want to think about the God that I serve and the reason that I serve the God that I serve. There's many little gods and many different avenues of worship on the face of this earth today. And people have brought idols into the church and all the way through the Bible you'll find that even the Jewish people brought idols into the temple and they begin to stray away from God. God said in the latter days uh, that there would be a falling away. Some have left their first love and some fall into the doctrines of Baal and the doctrines of the Nicolaitans and some churches are dead and some churches are lukewarm and it's just all across the country, not only the country but the whole world that we find uh, is straying away from the true principles of God, the Word of God. God said He inspired the Word of God, power of the Holy Spirit, touch men of God and they Pin down the Word of God. The blood of God flows through this precious book that we have, the book that we serve. And to thinking about the God that I serve today, and I want to serve the true and the living God. There's only one living God. There's many idols, and many people have brought idols of silver and idols of gold and idols of wood, even in the days when Diana uh, came out and they came out with a little Diana a silver shrine that they all worshiped that the merchants brought that all together so they could sell their idols but the God that I serve I found in the book of first Timothy chapter 3 and chapter 3 is a tremendous chapter it's where I got my calling from after God said I want you to be a light to the world I want you to go into all the world and I want you to preach the gospel and so I had to find out where my duty was and my responsibility was and I found it in the book of first Timothy chapter 3 it gives a, a qualifications of a, a elder or a pastor and the qualifications of a deacon to go through so my part is the qualifications of a pastor as I go through this and see what my duty was in the God that we serve today. So he said in verse 1, This is the truth saying, If any man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. So God put the desire in my heart. I didn't have the desire. God placed that in my heart. Called me one day to preach the word of God. I was saved, birthed into the family of the Lord. By the redeeming blood of the Lamb of God. A year later, God put a desire in my heart to preach the Word of God. Call me the election of God. Call me out to preach the Word of God. Said a uh, bishop then must be blameless. Can't be blameless in my own way, but I can be blameless in the in the way of the Lord. And God uh, makes us that way because He shed blood that we might have eternal life. He said, "Blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior." Given, uh, given to hospitality, out to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, or filthy lucre, be patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. If any man knoweth not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the house of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he falleth into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, uh, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snares of the devil. So that's the qualifications of a, a bishop, a pastor, or a minister as we go through this. But in verse 16, the verse I want to get to, without controversy, great uh, is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest into the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. That's the gospel in that one verse. The Lord Jesus Christ was manifest. God manifest into the flesh, walked on the face of this earth. So we see the gospel within this, and this is our, our qualifications. Of, as a pastor, it has several different qualifications is being a, a pastor or a bishop the inward life is he was called had that desire of god 
And then as a church, <coughs> the life is life is a bishop. He must be a pastor, a bishop, a shepherd, a minister, and an evangelist, all wrapped up in one. So he has a lot of different responsibilities. Uh, uh, his occupation, his responsibility as a deacon. Then the legal life is not to be uh, the qualifications. He's to be uh, uh, blameless and uh, husband of one wife. Uh, social life, his testimony, be vigilant, sober, good behavior, home life, his family, and his education, his prayer, and praying before God. But the God that I serve, and I think about the God that I serve, and the reason that I serve <coughs> the God that I serve, because he's the only one that's alive and well and on the throne of glory. All of these other little idols, they're not alive. They can't answer your prayer. They can't hear you when you pray. <coughs> and they're there as little gods. And the many of the people of the world today follow those little idols and they worship. And they think they're doing God a favor by following those and have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So I shout today because I serve the living God. And so I found out, first of all, my God. And I'm talking about the God that I serve, and because of this, because of my calling, because of my salvation, because of the uh, deeds that God placed in my heart, I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb of God, but faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word. But faith without works is dead, and so it's faith that God gave us for salvation, and it's faith that God uh, called us to go out and carry the gospel to work and to labor. We're servants of the Lord. I just serve the Lord. He's my master. He's my Lord. He's my God, and I serve him today, and so I found out that my God is a self-existent God. There's only one self-existent God. Before anything was, God was. He's an eternal God. He's always been, always will be. How can we explain that? You can't explain God. His ways are so much higher than our ways that His ways are past finding out. Uh, but what I do know, He is an eternal God. Uh, always has been, always will be. Uh, he is God, the self-existent God. When you go back to the Old Testament and you find the Elohim, uh, in the beginning, God uh, created the heavens and the earth. And uh, that's the self-existent God. Yahweh, self-existent God, uh, that God created all that we find around us today is created by God. One day God said he's going to burn it off and he's going to bring a brand new earth, brand new heaven and a brand new earth. In other words, he's going to renovate this earth and restore a brand new earth without the curse that's on it today. God has a placed a curse on it because of our sins and our ways. So the God that I serve uh, is self-existent. The God that I serve is a sovereign God. He's omniscient. means he's all wise. He knows everything. He knew everything before he ever created anything. He knew all things. And that's a deep subject for us. When we begin to think about the God that knew from the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, he knew Adam. He knew his fall. He knew Abraham. He knew his lifestyle. He knew Moses, his lifestyle, Joshua, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel. He knew those men before he ever created the heavens and the earth. And God is a sovereign, powerful God, uh, all powerful, all wise God. Uh, and so we find all the wisdom of God. God knows every thought that we have before we ever even think about it. He talked about the number of the sands of the seas. He's so uh, wise that he numbers all of the stars in heaven. There's a story to be told in the stars that God has placed in the heaven. And so we glorify him for that. He he is self-existent, he is sovereign, and then he is omnipresent, an eternal God. God said, "He, I am a spirit, and surely he is the spirit of God. When we worship, we must worship God in spirit and in truth, and so God is a spirit. He's a spirit of love in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, but he manifests himself into several different ways on the face of this earth. He manifests himself into a human body, went to the old rugged cross of Calvary, shed blood, placed in a tomb, resurrected on the third day, and ascended up to the heavens. And there he's seated in the heavens today. So we find he not only is he omnipresent, but we find he's supernatural. The supernatural God that we serve today. He can do things that are supernatural. God I knows all and he's all wise, but 
Uh, in his supernatural, we worship God in the spirit and truth. And so we know that God is alive today. Uh, we're not serving a dead God. We're serving a live God. A live God that will uh, use you and I along the way. God, he said, uh, the Lord Jesus is inside. We have the Holy Spirit that's inside. God said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're with inside us. And we give him praise today glorify him because he is supernatural and he is a, a God he's immutable that means that God puts something in the word of God we can claim that and we can stand on that if God put a promise in the word of God he'll keep his promises God promised us he said I've got to go away but when I go away I'll send the power of the Holy Spirit that happened just like God said it would Sent the power of the Holy Spirit of God and God said for us not to be ignorant brethren concerned in those which are asleep. God gave us a promise that one glorious day he'll come back. I'm looking for my Lord to come back. We're considered as a church the bride of Christ uh, and God's coming for his bride. Uh, a lot of people don't believe in a second coming, uh, but I believe the Lord's coming. I'm looking for him to come. My blessed hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe he's coming just like he said he would. And so we know that he is coming. Well, he is an omnipotent God. That means he's all power. He's the old Shaddai. He is a a God with all power. God has power. God allows certain things like Satan. He allows him to go a certain place and do a certain amount of things uh, as he did Job. Job uh, was a righteous man before God and Satan went before the throne and, and said, if you'll give me Job, uh, he'll turn his back on you. But we found out that was wrong uh, because Job stood with God. Even his friends want him to curse God and die. Even his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? And God looked down upon the, uh, no, I uh, looked down upon the Job, uh, and Job stayed with God, uh, and God restored all that he had lost, uh, and so the devil lost that battle, but God, through his uh, omnipresence, his omniscience, God is everywhere, he's almighty, all-powerful, he's all-sovereign God, and we praise him today, thank God, the God that I serve is alive and well, he's omnipotent, all-powerful, and he's holy, my God is holy, a holy God. When we look into the third heaven through the book of Revelation and we find the Lord Jesus seated on the throne of glory and the elders around the throne and they're worshiping, you and I one day will be in that position where we'll cry out, worthy is a lamb, worthy is a lamb, worthy is a lamb, worthy, worthy, worthy is a sovereign God of glory and we'll praise him. And the reason I know he's holy because the angels, trillions of angels all around the throne of God's glory and they're crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And when we think about the glory of God, the holiness of God, God is a holy God. Lord Jesus came to this earth. God manifest into the flesh, into a body, and he was holy. He was pure. There was no sin in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he had pure blood. And that pure, pure blood was shed on Calvary, placed on that mercy seat in glory to make an atonement for my sins and your sins. The God I serve is alive. He's a well. He's on the throne of God's glory. He's omnipresent. He's the Spirit of God that's everywhere at one time. He's omnipresent. Omnipotent, he's all powerful and he's omniscient, he's all wise. He knows everything from one end to the other, from the time he created the heavens all the way to the end. He recorded uh, the last days, uh, how it would be. Perilous times are here. Uh, he recorded uh, in the book of Revelation uh, how he would overcome Satan uh, and the nations that turn against him, and he would overcome and have victory. That's why we sing victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a God we serve. I trust you've been saved. I, I trust God uh, is your God. I trust you're not serving some idols or some piece of wood somewhere. But look into the Word of God. God's Word is holy. That's why they call it the Holy Bible. God's Holy Word. Find your place somewhere. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you enough to die for you on the old rugged cross of Calvary. Loves you enough to place in the Word of God whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I called on him. He birthed me into the family of God. He's my God. He's the one I serve. The God that I serve is alive and well.